The desperate search at this hour in the West after a massive and deadly mudslide in Washington state. The side of the mountain crashing down, wiping out homes with families inside. Take a look at the before and after tonight. Right in the center of the photo there, the river snaking through the middle of your screen. The road to the left of the river there. And tonight, this is what it looks like now. Homes and trees wiped out, a giant wall of mud moving through in just seconds. Look at the tree line there at the top and right below it where the earth gave way. On this Sunday, shaken neighbors hugging with the search for survivors now underway. Families gathering at the fire station tonight. We have team coverage this evening. The forecast for that part of the country, not good. More dangerous rain coming. But first, ABC's Neil Karlinski in Washington State for us. Neil, good evening. David, good evening. This slide is considered so dangerous that residents are still being kept back while search crews look for survivors. Pictures from above show the full scope. It's as if half a mountain slid down on this rural community, a slide measuring a square mile in size. This is the carnage. This right here in front of me was the highway. Home video from the ground makes it hard to tell that there used to be anything here. Survivors had to be plucked out by helicopter. The helicopter. Tonight, that baby is hospitalized in critical condition. Deep beneath all this mud, a residential street called Steelhead Road. Officials say it's simply not there anymore. There was a lot of commotion and a lot of people okay. that were very scared. And so, well, I don't know what supervisory means what? Need prayers. Nearly 30 homes were either wiped away clean or damaged when the hillside gave way Saturday, sending seven people to the hospital and killing three. Ominously, 18 people are still unaccounted for, including Reed Miller's son. Don't know where he is, and they're up there searching, and I'm just sitting here waiting. If he's still alive, who knows what kind of condition he's in. Well, it's not God in action, it's the devil in action. Even today, rescue crews are working mainly from the air because the hillside is still so unstable, it's considered just too dangerous. We've got this huge square mile mud flow up there that is basically like quicksand. It's, it's extremely fluid. It's moving. Because the area is so rural, it's unclear if those who are unaccounted for got out somehow or were trapped by the slide. Search efforts, David, are said to be slow and grueling. Neil, thank you. I want to bring in meteorologist Cecily Tynan back with us again tonight. And Cecily, you've been tracking this all weekend, and you say two systems coming this week could spell even more trouble for the Northwest? That's exactly right, David. Unfortunately, more rain is heading that way. Tomorrow will be dry, but Tuesday, another storm system will pull offshore. We're looking at one to three inches of rain expected and more rain by the end of the week into the weekend. And you pointed out that this part of the country, the ground is already heavily saturated. Already saturated by recent heavy rains. That's what caused the mudslides. And keep in mind, a typical mudslide travels at 10 miles an hour, but they can exceed 35 miles per hour. So that explains the homes in the middle of the street. Just horrific images coming in from the Northwest. Meantime, the other major weather headline tonight, your viewers in Philadelphia at PVI and throughout the Northeast want to know, do we have a better idea of the track of this nor'easter? We certainly do. It looks like New England will bear the brunt of the storm system. This is the latest track and it shows that we'll probably see some light snow in the mid Atlantic by Tuesday afternoon. But bear in mind, this is late March. High sun angle, light snow has a tough time accumulating that low pressure Pressure, though will rapidly intensify what we call bombing out by the time it gets off the coast of New England with some heavy snow and strong winds winds 50 to 60 miles per hour. And even if you don't see the snow, you likely will feel the cold temperatures this week. Exactly. It's going to feel like the middle of January. We're looking at an Arctic plunge 15 to 20 degrees below normal. The plain states 10 to 15, even Dallas, 5 to 10 degrees below normal. So keep the winter coats on hand. All right. Great advice, Cecily. Our thanks to you and WPVI tonight.